Esalen, the founder of Empower Clothing. I'm dedicated to empower women entrepreneurs by sharing tools, tips, and resources through leadership mindset and more on my show, Finding Your Way with Sally. And hello, hello, hello. Yes, I'm Sally. I'm a content creator and founder of Empower Clothing. I share authentic and everyday issues for women over 50. So you can learn more about my fashion products and services at empowerclothing.com.au. So today's topic is how to create a book that connects. And we're talking with CEO, author and writer, writing coach, Corey Wamsley. So before I bring up Corey, I thought, well, that ties in very nicely to um, my chakra range of clothing around the chakra of trust, the third eye. And, um, you know, my bamboo tops here are just not just clothing. It's about empowered clothing. It's conscious clothing. So linking it in to the chakras. So the, the trust chakra is all about, um, well, it's the third eye, which is here in between your eyebrows. And it's the intention is I choose to trust, trust that inner guidance, trust that intuition, trust that instinct and gut. Because when you're writing, you know, when you go within, you're really going to tap into the gold down there. So without further ado, I'll um, just introduce Corey and bring her up. So yes, you know, just choose to trust always be guided by that little niggle inside of you so Corey Walmsley is CEO of Aurora Corealis Publishing she works with leaders who have a transformational story to share share she helps them quickly and easily write and publish a book for their brand that helps them create a legacy and be seen as an expert while building a relationship with the reader she's also the host of the live stream show Paige Turner Studio with Corey on the SWE Media Network Corey's had nearly 20 years experience as a professional writer and editor, including 10 years with the Departments of Energy and Justice and four years as the executive editor of Inspiring Lives magazine. Corey's book, Braving the Shore, won first place in fiction at the Author's Own Awards in 2023. And Corey was a nominee, nominee sorry, for the Brave Women Project's Evolve Pillar Award at the same year. Corey has written nine, yes, nine fiction books and one non-fiction book, The Spark Method, How to Write a Book for Your Business Fast, and con contributed to two anthologies. Her 10th book, her 10th, wow, The Treasures We Seek, was published in November of 2023. So without further ado, let's bring up Corey. Wow, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Corey, thank you for being on Finding Your Way with Sally. Lovely to have you here. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me on. Wow, 10 books. Goodness me, <laughs> you must be tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't write them all at once. <laughs> Yeah, The Treasures We Seek was the last one. So have you got another one in the pipeline at the moment? Yeah, I um, I actually met with a friend of mine the other day. Her daughter's a scientist and my main character's a scientist. So I wanted all of us to sit oh, down wow. and talk and uh, kind of help me flesh out the character a little bit more. And it, it was really, really helpful. So yeah, I have it's kind of an outline um, in the works right now. Wow. So watch this space, hey? Yeah. <laughs> So thank you for coming along today and bringing along your empowerment share so that your share is being flexible has been ideal for staying on track to what you really wanted. You've been nearly derailed from your goals so many times with health, life, etc. but you always keep your eye on what you want and keep moving forward. Do you like to speak a bit to that? Yeah, um, I, I find that, you know, we can never predict where our path is going to go. <laughs> there are always things that are going to fly at us, you know, completely out of left field. Um, so whenever we have those things happen, it's important for us to be flexible. It's important for us to keep saying, OK, you know, this is this is still my goal. I'm still going to keep moving in this direction, even though <laughs> this crazy thing just happened in my life. Or yeah. take that time and say, you know what, this crazy thing just happened. And you know what? That's actually not my goal anymore. That actually gave me a moment to think about it and to shift where I'm headed. So sometimes those things can be, you know, kind of wonderful opportunities for us to readjust and head in a new direction. Mm, I think flexibility, particularly in this time, is so important and just going with the flow. <laughs> so what you can't sort of set firm, firm directions like you, you've got your rough idea, but you just got to duck and weave with it. Go like ride the waves of life, I call it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely be open to what's coming in and, you know, any sort of nudges that are still keeping you in the right direction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which links into your expert tip. Listening to your gut has served you well over the years. It's helped guide you towards things you enjoy, clients you want to work with and places I need to be. Absolutely. I'm so into that because that's what I was just saying at the beginning. Trusting your gut. It just mm -hmm. it's your inner GPS, isn't it? Would you like to speak more to your tip? Yeah. Um, so just over time, I've I've 
been able to listen to my gut whenever there's, you know, somebody comes into my world and I'm like, oh, this is really exciting. I always pause and think, okay, is this exciting because, wow, they're telling me this really cool story or is this exciting because it's actually something I want to work on? Um, and I've gotten caught up in the excitement before and then been like, man, this is going to be exhausting. I actually don't want to work on that. So it's important for me to be able to recognize that. And it's important for me to say, um, you know, is this project aligned with what I want to continue doing? Um, like we've published children's books over the years. And at first I was like, no, I'm not doing children's books. And then I had some that came in that were really powerful children's books. And I said, okay, I'm going to be open to them. We started doing them. And over time, it's just become something that, you know, isn't totally aligned for us anymore. So we have one coming mm -hmm. Um, this spring. And then after that, you know, I've been telling people, you know, we're not taking those on anymore. So it's helped me to say, okay, you know, this is no longer where we're going. Um, sure. Yeah, I have to trust my gut. Oh, I just love it. And redirect in line with that. Absolutely love it. Um, so I brought along an empowerment share as well. Where is it here? So, you know, I just truly believe that people resonate with authenticity and you know trust yourself and speak from the heart and be genuine and honest because everyone loves a true story i love listening to to well i listen to books as opposed to read them just because of the time thing and just the true stories you know you can feel it when people are speaking from the heart i mean in your experience over the time what is what is the key that you know how how helps people connect in with the books that are written yeah um one of the best things that I do um, whenever, or one of my favorite things that I get to do when I'm talking to an author, like during our first session, or sometimes even during our calls, saying, you know, why is it so important for you to get this book out right now? Mm. And even if they've been kind of scattered in their story, they know exactly why it's so important. Yeah. And that to me is really the core of the story. It's, you know, I'm going to impact this group of people. I'm going to help them. Um, I went through this challenge. I don't want them to go through the challenge in the same way that I did um, because we've all, you know, tripped ourselves up trying to get through something complicated and yeah. we want to help people. So whenever I get to talk to people about that, like that's really what it's all about. And that's how we build the story around that. It's here's this really important point that we want to help people with. And then yeah. what are going to be the supporting points for that? Yeah, I love it because this is about our topic today is how to create a book that connects. Mm -hmm. And I connect to that authenticity, to that to that pain, you know, that they've gone through because you, you put yourselves in their shoes and it's, whoa, mm -hmm. and the stories, you know, the highs and the lows, but then the gold that comes out of it. And as you said, it's the wisdom that you can to learn from other people's experiences. That's what I really connect with, which um, links into my tip, actually. It is as I just tipped, um, tapped on before, these days it's easier to read books, for me anyway, um, by listening in. So I have like Audible, so I'm, I'm, I have a non-negotiable every day walking out in nature. And this is when I listen, tap into these powerful stories of authentic people. And I just, I just love it being out in nature doing it because, you know, I'm a reader, but for years and years and years I'd read, you know, before I went to bed. And now i, I collapse in bed before I go to sleep so I do it every day connecting out in nature and the books are so powerful when I allow myself to turn off from the rest of the world and just get in there or even driving in my car because I'm in the car a lot but um you know are you an old old school turn the page type of reader <laughs> I am. Um, and I think part of it is because most of my like work is on a computer. So if I'm looking at a screen and, you know, let's say I'm doing the final read on a book. So our editor's been through it. The author has already approved it. And now it's my turn to do that final quality check. Um, to yeah. me, I'm in editing mode if I'm reading on a screen. If I'm switching to paper, then I'm sitting here going, okay, you know, this this is enjoyment for me. I get to relax. Um, it's very interesting how those two things have have become like my essential modes. There's, you know, the obvious, like I have to do work mode. I'm going to be correcting. I'm going to be thinking analytically and I'm going to enjoy this mode. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so important to balance the feminine and the masculine energies, right? The masculine yeah. energies is you have to do that hardcore. It's the computery stuff. And then the touchy feely because, you know, everything is energy. So turning the page, I, I've got to be honest, there's nothing beats, you know, getting a book, dog earing it, you know, um, and then coming back and and rereading old ones. I've got so many old books that are so old dog eared from rereading them and rereading them. And so, how did you actually get into book writing? Like, what was the thing that drove you in, into this area? Um, 
Well, I grew up reading a lot of books. <laughs> so I think most people who are authors uh, are doing that. They grow up reading a lot. Um, when I was actually in like middle school, I got this weird idea, like oh, I've read a lot of books. I could probably just write one myself. And I actually <laughs> sat down and I wrote, um, and it was 14 notebook pages, like handwritten. Yeah. 14 wow. notebook pages. It was a short story. So I wrote this whole thing and I'm looking at it like, why is it so short? Like I, there was that idea and I can do this, but it took me a long time to figure out exactly how to do it. So then, you know, past high school, my undergrad and then graduate school, when I was taking a class, um, I was inspired by some of the stuff we were doing in class to write a book. So I sat down and was like, oh, okay, I'll just write a book. You know, I, I'm much more mature and wise now, obviously. So I sat down <laughs> and I wrote three chapters and I went, okay, where am I going now? Um, so that's how I figured out the book writing thing. But it was it's always been something like I had to do. And um, I actually ended up publishing five novels uh, on my own um, the year that I was pregnant with my oldest. So most people, you know, clean their house and buy baby clothes. <laughs> I was editing books and publishing them. So I did all five that year. And that's really where I figured out how to do the whole book process. That's so beautiful. And you've also um, produced some journals, haven't you, with some beautiful artwork by... Was it yourself and your daughter on the covers of the journals? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Why oh, did that cut out? Oh, I was just saying you've also published some journals, haven't you, with um, some beautiful artwork on the covers? Um, I, I didn't catch it, but I think you were talking about Monkey Mermaid Magic, the uh, children's book I did with London. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that was actually her idea. She was five and she came in and said, you know, I want to write a book about my stuffed monkey coming to life, granting wishes. So I said, OK, if you're really interested, tell me your ideas. And I kind of coached her through writing this book and the two of us did it together. And then I illustrated the book. So I actually had my girls sit down in the different poses for the pictures and then I'd take a picture of it and then I illustrated it based on that. That is so beautiful. I didn't know that story. So, oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. So, um, I've got up on the screen so people can contact you at Aurora Coriolis. Uh, how, how do you pronounce that? It's Aurora Coriolis. Coriolispublishing.com. Uh -huh. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so um, every week I do a little um, Bling Angel card reading and we have different decks that we choose from. And today I thought I'd choose from the Inspiration deck because this is when we can tap into our intuition, be guided by there. So I'm just going to shuffle the cards and then pick a card and see what comes up. <laughs> now I was talking about the journals before and it must have cut out. So um, you've done some beautiful covers with your daughter with the artwork, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a series of journals now. They're 200 pages. They're just small, like uh, six by eight. Um, so yeah. you can like throw them in your purse, take them with you. And the covers of them are all paintings that my daughter and I have done. So oh, one of them God. is one that she did of a witch. And then the others are different paintings that I've done over the years. Wow, that's giving me goosebumps because I just love that it's connected with the family as well, that yeah. heartfelt energy running through. So the card that I've just pulled out, it says, there's never an emotion without involving your mind. <laughs> Everything's interconnected, right? So, you know, fear, and then we it goes into our head, you know, love, and then we overthink it or whatever. So it's just our, our little um, words of inspiration today. There's never an emotion without involving your mind. Everything's a connected space, our head, our heart, and our gut. And when we get them all in alignment, then we just flow, don't we? Like it's just being guided by that niggle inside, so trust that to bring that content up and then logically work it all out and then uh, tap it in with your hard emotions. So, well, that's it for today, I think. Um, thank you so much for coming on, Corey. And you, I mean, we haven't even touched on all the awesomeness of all your 10 books and uh, all that sort of thing, but I highly encourage everybody to reach out to Corey at Aurora Co CoreyAlisPublishing.com. I got it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, check out uh, all the books that you've published and also just reach out for a chat if you're interested in, in um, going down that publishing line. So thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. <laughs> I'm going to drop you down and uh, we'll catch you soon. Have a wonderful evening or day, whatever time it is over there. <laughs> All right, everybody. So thank you so much um, for coming on and watching us with Corey today. So you can join me for another episode of Finding Your Way with Sally Eslin next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. 
um, Central Time and Thursday at 8 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So, yeah, if you've got that little book inside you, reach out to Corey and have a chat because, you know, we all learn from everybody's adventures, their stories and their wisdom. So you've got a story to tell. Reach out to Corey and, and you know, get that out onto paper and, and get it out in the bookshelves because, you know, life's, we're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. So just do it. So with that, I'll catch you all next week. I'll drop myself down. I'll bring this up and, uh, yeah, we'll see you all then. Okay. Bye. You can learn more about my services and products at sallyestland.com. Make sure to join me every week for a new episode on the SWE Media Network YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts.